Okay, so here I'm going to talk about ceramic metal halide lights, CMH grow lights. We see two pictured right here, and just a little bit of describing them and what they're typically used for. So ceramic metal halides, they come in two wattages, 315, which would be a single bulb, and a 630 watt, which will basically be two 315 watt in the same fixture. They use a ceramic arc tube, which is stronger and degrades slower despite um, operating at greater pressures. Typical HID lights use quartz, which is weaker. So this ceramic metal halide is much improved over even a high-pressure sodium or a regular metal halide. The beneficial for the vegetative growth process, and they offer a broad spectrum, a nice white light that's efficient compared to other uh, high-intensity discharge lights. And they also have bulbs that will last longer uh, than your typical HID lights. Due to all these reasons, and then some, uh, ceramic metal halides are gaining popularity amongst growers. And you can kind of see why uh, with all the benefits that they do offer. In addition, they run cooler, um, and they offer many benefits over fluorescence or T5 lights that are considered to be their new replacement. So instead of buying a bunch of long kind of fluorescent tubes, buying one ceramic metal halide can suffice that and just make it a lot easier to keep track of and overall be cheaper to run in the long term. Ceramic metal halides produce greater output and a grower only needs to have to worry about one bulb and it's a long life compared to fluorescence. This is a small um, propagation tent that I have. It's a two by two. You can see I have a ceramic metal halide inserted here. Below here I have an easy clone and there's my monitor there. This instead of trying to change out all the T5 lights or worry about them to fit in this small area, uh, I simply can take this one fixture and be good to go. This is also dimmable, which is great. The Philips Master Color is considered to be the standard bulb for this type of light, uh, and it really um, is kind of the industry standard. Even though you will pay more for it, you do get what you pay for in this instance. So ceramic metal halides, a wall favored for the vegetative stage, they can also be used in combination with high-pressure sodium during flowering to help increase the spectrum the plants are exposed to and it does admit some UV light. So we could see here's a ceramic metal halide, and here's a high-pressure sodium, and they're kind of intermixed down here. Now we see the, definitely the yellowing of the overpowering of the high-pressure sodiums, but having that increased spectrum can help uh, improve the quality and the cannabinoids that the plants may produce in the end. The advantages to ceramic metal halides are they have low wattage consumption, as I said, 315 or 630 watts. They reduce heat generation, great for early stages of plant growth, and their full-spectrum white light that they produce. However, the downfall is they often need to be supplemented with high-pressure sodium during uh, flowering phases. An example here is the Dimalux, which ships with the bulb. You do have to install it. Uh, it's dimmable, as we can see here. You can rotate down uh, and change the wattages. It runs very cool and efficient. It's a low profile, and as a result, it can be used in place of T5 fluorescence and also used during the vegetative stage. The reflector is about 98% efficient, so there's a lot of advantages with ceramic metal highlights in general, and in particular this Dimalux is a great example of a lot of the benefits that ceramic metal highlights offer in maximizing those benefits with that low profile and dimmable qualities.